Hello guys and welcome to another MK Mobile video. Guys, today we're talking about immortality once again. However, this time I have for you specific examples in normal um, Dark Queen Tower. Of course, you can translate this into Fatal, it doesn't matter. Basically, you win difficult stages with weak teams by becoming immortal and overpowering your enemies by being immortal so they can kill you, <laughs> even if they tried for one year. Now, I will be covering almost any single thing that you can do uh, in this uh, particular uh, stage, in this particular stage tactics while it lasts because I hope it is a book because the way it works is that it takes advantage of the fact that it didn't cap the damage reduction so you can have a 105% damage reduction and while you have this damage reduction they cannot do anything to you and of course if you have Cold War Scarlet that's probably the best character to use because um, if she has the Crimson Shield activated basically uh, if you are following this strategy, then she cannot die, and on top of that, you reflect damage to your enemy. So she's pretty cool, however, not many people have her. Now, let's take a look at the talents. Uh, in offense, only uh, actually the talent that increases the combo and the chance. Here you need Rhino Stance because it reduces the damage taken by regular attacks, basic attacks by 20%, and also the Intimidating Presence because it reduces the chance for your block to be broken. Centurion Defense is always useful if they're doing special that's unblockable, or let's say X-Ray or Fatal Blow, you can reflect the damage back to the enemies. The Spirit of Vengeance, it's kind of okay. OAA attack is very important because you're reducing the duration of dots. And if you are immortal, you can still take damage from dots. Spirit of Vengeance, you have to lose two characters in order for this tactic to work. So that's useful talent. Shaolin Last Stand, kind of okay. Uh, basically in support, I have Max Cheer you Reverence because you have chance to reflect damage back to the um, opponent. So let's start with the first example. In the first example, I am making Dark Fate Terminator Immortal. As you can see, I don't have any equipment on the other two characters, Monk and Faron Ermac, and I have two equipment, two pieces of equipment on Dark Fate Terminator. Block Breaker, and I also have the Shadow Sash. That's all he requires. Actually, the Block Breaker, he doesn't really require it. <laughs> but instead of that, you can give him tower equipment. But he does require the Shadow Sash. Monk and Ermac, they all have to die. However, first of them, uh, should be Monk and then Faron Ermac so that you can achieve two stacks on Faron Ermac pass if you know it reduces the damage it, you take the moment some of your characters dies or the enemy characters uh, but we'll assume that you cannot kill one of the enemy characters because if you can for example kill Kenshi then it's going to be even easier if you kill Kenshi then your Monk dies and then your Ermac dies that's even better because you get three pa uh, stacks of the Ermac passive now, sadly, my Terminator attacked, so I have to buy some time. I'm going to attack uh, to Ermac. Ermac is going to die. I'm going to fast forward because basically currently I'm taking uh, a lot of punishment. This guy dies. Then my Terminator is going to die. See, I'm not resisting. My Terminator is taking some damage, but he's taking damage at all. Now he's going to rise with his endoskeleton form. And from this stage on, he's completely immortal. Look at this. He doesn't take any damage. Uh, at some point, I just in activated the auto play. Look at the special one of Shao Kahn. Nothing happens whatsoever, the Terminator is completely immortal. So, uh, basically, <laughs> this battle took a lot of time, a lot of time, guys. But at the end of the day, my Terminator killed them. Of course, this is without any tower equipment. And it will work even if your Terminator is Fusion Zero. Of course, somehow you need to do more damage than the enemy can recover while they attack down. That's important. At the end of the day, uh, the Terminator took down uh, the, this Shao Kahn and I won this battle without losing a single HP on my Terminator. He's completely immortal. Uh, and yeah, basically that's it. And why is he immortal? Because his passive says 15% damage reduction uh, in general and 30% in his endoskeleton form. So the moment he is in to he, his endoskeleton form, he cannot die. If you have two um, stacks of for an Ermac passive, you have Shadow Sash, 20% special attack reduction. And if you have a Rhino stance, another 20% basic attack damage reduction. So let's move to the second video. So all right, so now we're talking about how to make immortal any Spec Ops character. However, this time we're not completely immortal. We are 99.9% .9 immortal. And I, once again, I already spoke about this, uh, but uh, I want to showcase how this team works in Towers. My Terminator doesn't have anything. Jackie, though, uh, has specific equipment that's important to have. Without those equipment, it won't work. Shadow Sash, again, like the Terminator. However, this time, we need the Edenian Pie. Without it, we cannot be 100% immortal. Of course, you have to keep in mind that even if you achieve, let's say, 90% damage reduction, you can still win. You don't have to be necessarily 100% uh, immortal, right? If you, have, if you are taking 5% or 10% damage, 
and you manage to uh, make sure that this character that you have deals some damage and heals, you're good to go. You don't have to be 100% immortal, guys. So take advantage of that while it lasts. So now I'm going to kill the Terminator. So he has to die first. Then Ermac has to die. Uh, and once Ermac dies, look at this. Okay, my Jack is here. Now, the important thing now is the Edenian Pie triggers once your character is below 50% health. So I have to take some damage. And the reason why I chose Rain is not because I'm biased. The Rain variation is important because you have this spell. So if the enemy sets you on fire, you can remove the fire. Remember, you are taking damage from dots, even if you are immortal. And currently, guys, the Edenian Pie effect triggers, and I'm taking one damage from each and every single one of the basic attacks or the special attacks. Now Takeda is going to hit me for one damage. Look at this. Every single hit counts for one. If he does special attack on me, it's going to be still one damage. There is no difference. Uh, at some point he's going to do special whatever. Okay, do something to me. He's not going to do anything. Okay, should I? Can I? I believe here. Yeah, see, uh, his special two does three damage to me because there's three pretty hits. So basically this is how you turn cosplay uh, Jackie into comp uh, almost immortal character. Once again, you'll be taking damage from fire dots, while a Terminator cannot take damage from fire because in general he's immune. So let's proceed to the third character that you can use actually, and she's quite cool. All right, guys, the third character is another Jackie, cybernetic Jackie. Look at her passive, takes 30% less damage versus Nether Realm and Outworld. Look at her equipment. She also requires just Shadow Sash like the Terminator. And see what's going to happen. Uh, I have King Tarot from Ermac, so what they have to do is they have to die. In this particular stage, she won't be completely immortal. You can see she takes some damage because she doesn't have the Danian Pie. With that Danian Pie, she's going to get immortal, 100% if she's below 50% health. But this current stage, that's fine because I'm taking fire, I'm healing from it. Uh, if that wasn't the case, then I would give her some piece of equipment that heals from special one use or special two. Because of this particular uh, stage, look at this. Jade deals some damage to me, but it's not enough. And the moment I'm, setting, I'm set on fire, I start healing. So I don't have to be 100% damage resistance, right? And look at special two of Jade. It's pathetic. She almost doesn't do anything. And sub-zero, one third of the health. In the negative case, this will kill me right off the bat. But in this particular case, it doesn't really hurt that much. So that's a pretty good example of Jackie, who is almost immortal, but that's pretty cool. So you can finish the stage. Of course, once again, if you have the Edenian Pie, Jackie will become immortal. And even without a Terminator, the key word here is that she can become immortal without a Terminator. However, if you want her to be 100% immortal, you require the Edenian Pie and she can do it. So let's proceed to the next video. In the next video, I'm going to reveal a character. That's the only character in the game who actually can trigger Ermac passive twice. Guys, let's do it. All right, guys. So they have classic Goro and they have the uh, equipment on uh, Jackie. Look at this. She has Tiara of the Damned and Shadow Sash. So definitely uh, she shouldn't be immortal, right? Uh, because we saw in the previous video that she had the uh, uh, Shadow Sash and uh, two guys of our team died and she couldn't do anything in the sense that she wasn't immortal. She was still taking damage. But we want her to be immortal. Should we give her something else or should we give her whatever? I believe we can take we can take her for a spin with this equipment. Now, unfortunately, Tiara of the Dam doesn't make you immortal. And I did this battle twice because it is important that Goro dies twice before Ermac dies. Look at this now. At some point, Scorpion is going to kill my Goro right about now. You can see Feast of Souls. Now we're just blocking. I am buying some time. I want Goro to come back so that he can die again. And then I want to suicide Ermac. This is the plan. Goro comes back. So at this point, I don't mind losing him. So he's going to die. Uh, and now I'm going to uh, suicide Ermac. He's also going to die, which means that this, from this point on, my Jack is going to be uh, immortal. Look at this, 95%, so 95,000 health. I'm sorry, almost 100% health. She's completely immortal. Look at this, special two of Cabal, no problems. Unfortunately, they can damage us with, um, you know, bleeds, fires, whatever. But if we fast forward, you are going to witness something incredible. Jackie destroyed every single one of those MK11 characters. And at the end of the fight, guys, she said this. So I'm going to let you enjoy it. Actually, you can, we can enjoy together the last seconds of this fight. This is going to be pretty crazy, right? All right. Say my name, bitch. Crazy, right? Now, let's move to the final part of the video where I'm talking about... Um, where this uh, strategy can fail, what should be aware of, and how, how well it works against bosses. 
All right, so I have uh, Flaming God, Fargot, Lucane, and I have Goro, and I have uh, Faron Urmak on Fargot, Lucane. I have the Edenian Pi, so once he's below 50% health, he's immortal. So if we uh, fast forward, we're going to see that at this point on, my Fargot, Lucane, is at 1 HP, and he's fighting all these three characters, and he cannot die because he's immortal. However, at the end of the video, he dies. Uh, and this is how it works. The point of this book uh, and using it is that they didn't cap damage reduction, so you can have 105% damage reductions. However, there are certain uh, modifiers that improve the damage of the enemy. So, for example, that mark increases the damage you take by 10%, which basically means that if we deduct 10 from 105, now you're not immortal. You are taking 95%, uh, actually 5% damage, because your damage reduction is decreased. And another modifier that actually does that, so you have to be careful, if you have the death mark, you're no longer immortal. You're taking some damage. And at this very moment, rain is going to soak, which basically means that lightning attacks deal, I, I forgot the exact number, 20 or 30%. And guess what? Terminator Special 2 has lightning attack. So he's going to do uh, Special 2, uh, look at this, and I'm going to take lightning damage, which will do about 10k. It's going to be enough for my immortal Lucane, uh, Lucane, Lucane to go down. So this is how I lost this fight, even though I was sure that after 20 minutes I'll be able to defeat it. Um, I was wrong. And the last thing I have to mention in this long, long video is, is this strategy worth against bosses? Let's find out. Alright guys, we are at battle 60, Fatal Dark Queen Tower. I reckon this strategy works better if you're fighting, uh, let's say, battle 160, 180. What I'm trying to do is I am giving to my Terminator pieces that reflect damage, such as, for instance, uh, the Mask of Jason. It has 25% chance to reflect basic damage. And I have the talent that reflects damage, special too. Uh, but it doesn't work well, the AI is extremely dumb, it takes them literally one minute to kill your Terminator. Granted, if your Terminator is low fusion, you can try it. If they all can die in, let's say, 20 seconds, and then all you have to do is block. And uh, if you block, uh, they will eventually suicide. But if they have a healer, uh, for example, Shang Tsung, you know, every single time when they kill one of you, they heal. This is not going to work, so it's certain specific situation that might be kind of okay. If you have Cold War Sky, that would be okay, but with your Terminator, look at this, my Terminator is still standing one minute in the fight, and now, uh, I mean, he almost doesn't do any damage. Melina, I mean, I granted he does, doesn't have any tower equipment, right? So that he can die faster. My Terminator is almost maxed out, unfortunately. And basically, I tried the same one more time, and... Let me show you the result of the first attempt. That was horrible. It's like I almost never did anything. And I have the bloody shock and armor only because I want them to reflect damage to them. But uh, fortunately, it didn't uh, work pretty good. And now be uh, I just equipped the Jason piece, I believe. This was the point of me doing that. Jason piece. Yeah, exactly. The hockey mask. So now I will hope my Terminator will die. Uh, but he just doesn't die because at some point the boss just stands, doesn't do anything. And now my Terminator is, um, Terminator is immortal. He doesn't take any damage. Look at this. And all I'm trying to do is to reflect damage back to them. But Tanya reflects some damage to her. If you notice on the top corner of the screen, Melina, at some point, she's going to do special to her. She's going to reflect damage to her. But uh, none of this is kind of incredible. Look at this. She reflects at 75k. That's the best thing I did for the entire run. And my Terminator is immortal. But I just cannot take proper advantage of it. So, is this strategy the best against bosses? I think in certain situations it might be just decent, but definitely it's not the best thing to do against bosses. However, in certain between bosses fight is going to be great. Alright guys, so this is going to be all for you for today. Take care.